Good afternoon, everyone. You'll have a good laugh at this. I was merrily working away thinking that I was recording, but I think I accidentally switched the camera, the videoing off when I moved the arm of my um, little recording apparatus down. And so I was talking away and I happened to just sort of check that I was still on screen and looked under my phone and it had gone completely black and I went okay I'm definitely not recording anymore so unfortunately you've missed me couching down part of the thread I'll just read quickly recap we haven't done that much here and I've been using some macrame thread that I got I think from Kmart or, or Target just a very small section of that and I've just portioned off um, I think I took four four strands of it bent it over double and then I've just couched it down and so couching down is as simple as popping up um, with a regular piece of one single strand of embroidery floss or you could just use regular um, cotton and then you're just gonna hold the strands of the textile or the thread that you're using on the top in place so I'm using the macrame thread as my sort of texture on top and then you're just going to put little stitches over the top of what you're um, holding down so that's the couching process so you pop up on one side of the textile and then pop down on the other side of your, your thread or textile. So you can, this way, you don't need to have something that's thin enough to pass through the fabric, because you can incorporate it into your piece by putting little stitches that just hold it down in place. So it means you can use quite thick wools, um, thick cord, string, all sorts of things that wouldn't necessarily pass through your fabric, but that they can actually become incorporated into your, your piece. So I'm wanting to do the bird that's sitting at the front with a range of, range of couched down fibers. And I'll reshare those with you because I did that on the video. And then I think that was the video that I stopped recording. So I won't try and splice them together. I'll just re-explain um, and hopefully remember that I do need to re-explain things rather than assuming that you heard it when the video wasn't actually recording. So we've now done both sides and I left um, the ends just a bit longer than I need because I'll trim the end off once I've actually got it all couched down. It just helps to have something that you can hold on to with your finger like I'm holding on to it here. So you can see I've got a bit of extra um, which I'm just going to snip off with a little bit left at the end, which is nice anyway, because it ends up looking like a little taily, taily bit. So that's those bits. Now we can have a think what else we wanna to add to the tail. So I've got some random threads that I'd cut off. This was from a sort of um, multicolored perle, but with these little knobbly, knobbly bits on it. But I might save those for the wings. Wondering if I might use a bit of this perle from Melanie from Purveyor of Reclaimed Textiles. Um, or is that too similar to what we've got? I think that could be nice. So again, I'll just cut it a bit longer than I need it to be. And I'll start it away. In fact, we're actually starting at this end, aren't we? Because that's where our thread is down there. So we'll do that. So I'll just pop up at the end I am. So I'm just holding it down and getting a stitch over the top of it. Sorry, I'll just need to tilt it for a moment while I do that. So the first stitch is always the hardest while you're just getting it to, to tack down. And in fact, the second stitch, because it, I think it slipped out of the first one, so I might just pull it down a smidge longer than it needs to be. Get it held in place. Another one down the bottom as well. So yeah, couching is a very handy little technique to have to be able to add texture without really battling to pull thick things through your through your fabric. Because sometimes it just won't go, or sometimes it'll get stuck, and you might break your needle. Um, it can can get tough. And also it's really hard with the thick things. You've got to get quite a big head on your needle to be able to even pass it through the, the eye of the needle. So I'm just yeah, using a single strand of embroidery floss for my um, stitching thread. Um, I just chose it in a purple color, 
but you could really do it in whatever color you want it's all just going to add some nice little color variation like feathers on a bird would have on a colorful bird anyway lots of bird life around here in bright i was just saying it's early um, afternoon we've had a nice lunch of a salad sandwich out on the deck sun is shining but the deck's nicely nicely shaded bit of a breeze today which is good just a gentle gentle little breeze um, but yeah and lots of birds around galahs and cockatoos and some that we hear back home as well as well as some other different different bird calls the mornings it's just yeah it is definitely a chorus of of bird sound so Sunday here so lots of the people that have been up for the weekend are heading home my parents came up for a few days while we we're here and they've they've headed home this morning this mum's very keen to get back and check on her veggie patch she's got lots of I think eggplants and um, capsicums and things which haven't sort of matured yet so she was keen that she didn't lose those plants through them drying out because it's been particularly warm back in Melbourne as well so I'm not sure how my veg patch will be by the time we get we get home I've mainly got tomatoes beans zucchinis um, and I usually find around this time of year the zucchinis have kind of done their run their time particularly they get mildew on them Mum's got a theory that the ladybirds actually farm the farm the mildew on the on the zucchinis. There's other other people that say there's a, that they actually the um, ladybirds eat it and therefore help prevent it. But Mum thinks they actually introduce it and then farm it to feed themselves. So who knows? Gardening is uh, forever you forever learning things or discovering things or trialing things. Just like our stitching when we're doing a, doing a gardening piece like this Roxy Journal of Stitchery down the garden path. Um, so this is the glass house prompt that I'm doing, um, which is the prompt we've got for this two week period, either a shed or a glass house. And this is my glass house that's gonna be filled with birds and butterflies and beads. And then with, um, I think this is, I've shortlisted down to this lace to be creating part of the exterior and probably this lace along the the bottom and maybe this lace somewhere in it so decisions still to be made but I thought I'd um, yeah start work on on this and yeah using the embroidery hoop just gives you a bit of um, assistance in holding the, the fabric when you're couching things down so enough talking what else are we going to add in so I've got some of this wool I'm not sure if this is Appleton or a different type of wool but I could add a bit of that in as well. I might double it over as I've done with the other pieces. So leave a bit extra and cut it off. So I like to have all my threads around me. You probably can't see the ones up the top, but it just means I can quickly glance across and add things as I need to. So let me just check, is my needle? Yep, my needle's at the top. So again, we can just pop up through the top And then double up our bit of thread. Let's check I'm still on camera. The camera is still recording. I'm not sure I could <laughs> do the intros again. In fact, I don't think I did the proper intro saying what, it, what the project was that we were working on when I hit record the second time. So hopefully no one was sitting there thinking, I don't know what you're doing. But that's the way with craft. Sometimes we don't know what's happening. We're just stitching away, nattering away. I'd love to hear what stitching adventures you've been up to over the weekend. If you've got a video or an Instagram or anything, post me a link in the, the comments below and I'd love to love to check it out. The luxury of being on holidays is a bit more, bit more time. Um, I spent a fair bit of time yeah, touring mum around and mum and dad taking them to all the different places, but I'll have a lot more, a lot more time now. We'll just chill out for the next, the next week. Um, because Alex and I, my partner and I have been up here a lot so we've kind of done the done the touring around although it's Alex's birthday tomorrow I won't name his age um, so we'll probably head down to the King Valley wine region um, and head out to a nice um, little town and head to a lovely little courtyard um, sort of pub there and have they do a very good chicken parmigiana so 
but it might be lunch and a special cake for Alex's birthday. And the nice thing is they're a dog friendly um, establishment so you can sit in the courtyard or on the veranda with your dog so Travis the pup will, will come with us. Because we don't really go anywhere, we can't take Trav so if we find dog friendly places we like to, like to support them. Mum said he's such a, such a lucky dog, lives a very good life with us, which I think is pretty true. We've been down to the river this morning um, for him to have a swim. Just loves the water, he just goes straight in as soon as he sees the river, straight in he goes. Whereas when we yeah, first brought him here, there was a bit of hesitation, wasn't quite sure about it all. But now he doesn't wait for, to even see if we're gonna go in, but we'll go down this afternoon. It's funny actually yesterday we went um, just below where all the kids swim um, there's sort of like a an area that they've made with um, like steps down to it into the river river area and then there's a, a very small little weir um, where it sort of water the water water falls over it and then goes down the rest of the more natural bit of the the stream and so we were down in the bit below that and when I got into the water I saw what I thought was a fish and it turns out it was a fish a river river trout and it was seemingly sort of, it looked like it was upside down. At first I thought it was dead, but then I worked out it was actually just feeding um, on some algae on a, a rock, because there's a, a rock bed on the, the floor of the river. Um, and so it was feeding away on that, totally oblivious to what was going around it. And the reason it was sort of in an upside down pose was it was holding, I guess, onto the rock and where it was feeding. And it was being sort of then pulled down the river with its tail um, down there. And so I pointed it out to my partner and he, Lent down, picked it up. He was so excited, he got it in his hands, held, holding it up, and then it straight out of his hands, slipped straight out of his, hand, his hands and jumped into the water. But then Travis, uh, the pup, he was standing nearby and he thought, oh, wow, fish. And so he lunged to try and get it, but we managed to, to grab him so he didn't get the fish because we didn't really want um, to take the fish. Alex just wanted to kind of catch it and have a, have a look at it. but. Off it swam, off it swam to its freedom down the river. But yeah, pretty amazing to be able to catch a fish with your hands. So Alex said that was quite a memorable thing. He's never done that, never done that before. In all his years of coming to Bright. And then mum's quite a keen fisher person normally in the bay, so saltwater fishing, but she was then excitedly looking around to see if she could spot another fish. Now I'm down the bottom, I was about to start stitching up the top, but it's always good with your stitching just to go up and down, up and down to the extent that you can. So you get a nice neat finish and you're not wasting more thread than you need to waste. So we'll just hold it. So I'm just layering them up. I want to still be able to see, see all the, the little different colours of things. And just this will probably be almost enough. Oops, I've just pulled always the way, talking away, and I pulled the thread out of my needle. Just checking we're still recording yet, and I might just need to move it up a smidge so you can see. nice to use the different different textures of things and again you don't need much so you can add a few different samples of textiles into your into your piece I must admit I love stitching birds whether it was that um, that scrappy scrappy robin that I did in some previous video um, I did the bird with lots of little over stitches, which I'll probably do for this one at the back, something similar. I did that as part of the Roxy Journal of Stitchery Christmas prompt. I think that was, was that a, yeah, that was a bird prompt that we had for that. I couldn't remember whether I'd done a bird for some, some other prompt. I like the, the purple that I've used here with some other blues and things, so having that slightly darker contrasting um, thread just gives a lovely, lovely feather effect to it all. I 
And so you could potentially line up all your threads and then sort of yeah, couch them down together, but you wouldn't then get that sort of individual sense of individual feathers. So it is worth that little bit of extra, extra effort to do it bit by bit. And again, I find this sort of stitching very, very relaxing. So you might find I go quiet at some point because I've just drifted in and forgotten that I'm actually got you sit, sitting here at the table with me and, and stitching away. It would be lovely if you were just across the table from me enjoying the, the views out to the slightly misty mountains in the distance. Enjoying the little bits of bird call that I can hear outside. Can't hear whether Travis is having a a puppy dream where he sometimes does little, very quiet little barks in his dream when he's probably dreaming about playing with other dogs or chasing rabbits. Not that we've let him chase any rabbits or wildlife around here. So there we go. We've got our little, little tail. Might bring those eventually into a, a little tail position. I can actually do that now. I'll just just pass my needle down the back through the stitches so if you want to quickly get down you can just sort of pass your needle so that it picks up just some of the stitches down there so I'm going to get it to come up like that oops come on three come that's sometimes when the embroidery hoop gets a bit in the way is when you're trying to trying to get back up and out my end. So I haven't had the chance yet to watch anyone else's videos for this prompt to see what people are doing for their sheds or glass house. I've seen a few already on the, the Roxy Journal Stitchery Facebook group. Some great, I saw a she shed, so that's a great idea. I've got some friends that have she sheds for their gardening, little potting sheds and things. I must admit that when I'm gardening, I much prefer to be out in the actual garden itself, so I don't feel the need for a she shed myself. But I think I'd love a little craft room one day. My partner has a block of land up here, but it doesn't have a, doesn't have a house on it yet, but we were pondering ideas for a, a house up here, and I was pondering the idea for a nice little, nice little craft room to work in. So if I just bring the new thread up here and tie it off. So just putting a little knot, actually two little knots in the back of it. Okay. And even with these little scraps of um, thread, you can save them and potentially couch them down with something else for another part of your bird. So for the wing then, so we've got our tail, little tail bit done there. For our wing, I've got this um, wool, which has some funny little, um, almost, I think they're actually like little knitted, knitted bits on them. Um, I cut one, well, I didn't cut one of them. I unwound one of the little knitted bits and I thought that could be a good part of the, the wing. So I'm not sure whether to put it that way or that way around. Let's maybe do it that way. Um, and I will grab a bit more of my I'll probably just keep using this same embroidery floss for the overstitching. Thought I'd lost my needle there, but nope, it was sitting on my mat. This is just a, a drying mat that I use in some of my videos. It's got like a sort of a non-slip background on it and it's padded so I can just um, stick my needles into it. It's also great when I put beads on because they don't don't roll away and it protects the table underneath because obviously I don't want to put any little needle holes but it does mean I can push through um, and not touch the not touch the table. So just going to do a knot so putting the thread against my finger and then wrapping the thread around and then holding on to that little knot and sliding it down to the very bottom of the thread where it will form a little little knot and then we'll pop up so I think we'll do the yeah the wing this way I'll put this on the outermost edge so I'm going to just bring my needle through and then I'll pass it I think through the top bit of this little knitted purpley bit 
I'll position it where we want it. And then I might pop myself down. Oops, sorry, yep, there we go. Worth periodically checking that you don't have any knots at the back of your stitching because sometimes they sneakily sneak in and once you've gone too many stitches along it's hard to then unknot it. But you can then just stitch it down to your piece um, at the back if you need to. So just make this little top of his wing a bit rounded. Stitch down that little loose end. It's probably good to have a bit of fluffiness. I probably don't want to make it totally totally flat so with this one I might not do as many stitches over the top I might just um, pop up in the middle of it and just leave the rest of it up a bit fluffy so we can always add more stitches if we need them but we don't want to lose all the fluff lose all the texture I am still recording, thank goodness. Who else has that problem? You're recording away and then you've moved your phone and you've obviously flicked because it does um, have a little button on the side where if you flick that it stops or starts recording. So that's, I think, what happened to me. I know some of you broadcast, I think, on your TV as you're recording so you can see all your, your stitching, Corinne. I think that's something you do. Um, that's a smart move. Haven't quite yet worked out yet and I don't have a TV in the room where I'm sitting in the in the kitchen here. Although the TV here does play, um, it's got a special button for YouTube on the controller so it'll be easy to watch some videos when I get the chance to, to do that. I just thought I'll jump on and start to share this in case anyone's wanting to sort of stitch along or try some of these ideas for their piece as well or just for fun. Because this is a good way you can use just any little scraps you might be able to raid if you've done knitting in the past or done wool crafts or macrame. You can make use of all your little scrappy, scrappy bits. And you could just draw yourself a simple bird shape to use as your base if you don't happen to have some fabric like this that you wanna um, use to, to stitch over. So yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that, that wing nice and fluffy. So let's select then the next piece. I was actually wondering, will I use some of, will I use, I might put something else down first as a base. So which was the wools that I've used already? I could use a bit of this again, I think. Which is a bluey, bluey mauvey sort of colour. Got a few different ones here. They actually look very similar in colour and I'm just trying, okay, so that's that one. And then have I got, oh yeah, and then I've got this one pulled out as well. So those came from Mel Melanie Purveya of Reclaimed Fabrics, Re Reclaimed Textiles as well is just on Instagram and sells bits and pieces. Bought some vintage yo-yos from her online today so I'll have to go and pick those back up when I'm back from holidays. I think she gets them from the United States from her brother where people have made yo-yo quilts which you just don't tend to see as much over here. So I've never found one of those in a in an op shop. But I must admit, I didn't do much op shopping during the whole sort of COVID time. So it's nice to be able to go back and support charities and op shop away. So I posted a few videos recently of my op shopping adventures up here. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I will do the couching again on these pieces. Um, because my thread's down the bottom, so I just start, start there. And I've left, as I did with the tail, just left the, the thread a bit longer. Um, so not the thread, the wool a bit longer just so that it's easier to get the first stitch in and not have it um, slip, slip through. So I wonder with this why, no, I'll just keep it like that I think. I was wondering if I'd let it spread out and sort of create that wing shape but I think I'll couch it down um, with the two bits of thread next to each other. We should have brought that one up a bit further over but we're not aiming for perfection here are we we're just aiming to to stitch and have fun and relax in the process 
it's hard if you're a bit of a, a perfectionist or if you've been someone that's done really formal styles of stitching slow stitching might um, feel a bit wrong to begin with but it's definitely a relaxing way and not to be at all critical and just see where the stitching takes you and the funny thing is often when you're part way through something you'll think oh that's not looking that good but once you get those that mass of stitches or that um, that sort of build up of textures and stitches generally the pieces start to start to look good I was working on my um, chateau vegetable patch um, because I've still got some more beds of that to, vegetable patches of that to put stitches in and I was doing some little French knots um, for lettuces and I was looking at them going oh that's that's a bit crooked I'm not sure I might have to unpick it but I just kept going and by the time I got to the end of the vegetable bed I was like no nah, that looks that looks good because invariably if they plant lettuces they're not going to be in an absolutely impeccable row you can plant them in rows but then some of them will sort of veer off in different directions also depending where the light in the the vegetable patch comes from um, so nature nature is not is perfect but it's not always totally totally symmetrical like that beautiful beautiful textures there so again I can um, sort of snip off the bottom bottom little bit of the the wing and just leave that coming across so what else will I use for my wing I've got this this I think it's a pearly it was an, again from Melanie it's got 340 on it so I'm not sure whether that's I think that's the color the colour of it but it's a thicker thicker sort of thread very similar colour to what I'm using for my stitching down but again we can just add some of that in maybe we'll do three three strands or three bits of that let's do that one two checking again that I'm videoing I've become paranoid now that it's not going to be videoing but I think we're right yeah I think that'll be nice there so we're yep we're up the top so we can pop up through the top pop up here and because I've got one strand that's not attached to the others I'll just need to get that stitched down as well so we might need to go over that way. I might just put a few more stitches in up the top to be sure that it's all holding up there. So the adding texture is good to do on the bits of the bird or whatever you're doing, whether it's a flower or anything that's in the in the foreground because then it does add that that texture that you would naturally see and then the bits that are a bit back further I can potentially do some stitching on the on the head rather than couching down of thicker thicker threads so you just want to hold the tail the end bits of your your thread that you're couching down and I might just put another stitch in here and I might just do still a couple more just up the top just to, to be sure, to be sure. As the Irish would say. I think the Irish say that. Hopefully it's not something that we've just misappropriated. Never been to Ireland. I would like to go one day. I would like to go to Scotland. That's where my father's family came from. My dad um, I think shocked most people that um, when he got married to my my mum at the, the wedding. Um, mum had been asking him for weeks apparently before the wedding what he was going to be wearing because she was thinking oh well I'll try and coordinate some of the flowers with the with what with his suit and things like that and dad just refused to tell her what what colour suit he was wearing. He said, no, it's a surprise. Anyway, mum was in the church, standing, standing at the, 
at the altar. Obviously, I wasn't there. Well, I could have been there, but no, mum and dad were, were married before I was even thought about. Um, and so, yeah, mum was at the altar waiting for dad to... Um, oh, no, sorry, it would have been the other way around. No, mum wouldn't have been at the altar. Dad would have been at the altar. Mum would have been coming into the church. Um, so as mum came into the church, she looked down the, looked down the aisle and there was Dad standing in a kilt with his knobbly knees. And so she'd never anticipated that she'd be marrying someone wearing a, wearing a skirt. Um, but Dad's grandpa had always wanted him to get married in a kilt, so he had followed, followed his wishes but decided to, to keep it a secret for Mum or a surprise for Mum. So, yeah, there's, I've seen the wedding pictures with Dad in his, Dad in his kilt. So we've got a Scottish surname. Um, and then mum's ancestors are from the UK. Nana and grandpa had done a lot of work um, researching the family tree. They'd gone back quite a long way for that. Whereas I don't think we go back, we have as much of a history documented for dad's, dad's family. Just having a look in the design where the actual wing comes down to, comes down a bit further. But again, you don't have to be slav slavish to the, the design either. You can just do what you think is going to look good as well. Do a few more little stitches. Oops, I think I didn't catch everything in that stitch, so we'll just go over the top. To the little tail area. Wonder actually, should I bring them right down? I might bring them right down the wing there, I think actually. Probably should have done that with the other piece also, but that's okay. We can always add something over the top because I think this wing still needs something possibly up the up the middle of it. We almost should have used a contrasting um, embroidery floss on this because the embroidery floss I'm using is a very similar colour to the very similar to the thread that I'm catching down, the pearl that I'm catching down, or pearl a. Is it pearl or pearl a? Can someone tell me the correct? I've heard it said both ways. So I feel like I just alternate. It's like the glue, I never know whether it's yoo or UHU, or well, I don't think it's Uhu, but I have been known to call it that as well. <laughs> ah, well, gotta laugh at yourself sometimes. Okay, so I'll just get a stitch or two in at the end and then I'll just um, snip off that bit of, that bit of thread as well stitch in to hold it tight and then I can just take off the the end bits that we we're not stitching down and then I might even put oops lucky I didn't it's always good to move the things off your work area because you might otherwise end up stitching them to the back but thankfully on this occasion I didn't well, there's one little thread still sticking out there from the top right oops I managed to create how how would I possibly have created a knot around my needle I don't think I have have I let's just check nope we're still properly threaded we're not knotted so I'm just going to put now that I've cut the end bit I'm just going to put a few extra stitches just to make it narrow in a bit like the end of a feather would naturally do of little tight stitches over the end of it. Maybe one more. And then if I want to 
want to I can even just do another little a little stitch over this way and then it will look like a little pointy bit so if I do another one down so you can use a combination of the, the couch threads and then any over stitching if you want to create any little detailed detailed points okay Got a bit of thread left so would I want to put a bit of this over the wing as well to get, add another bit of texture I think that could be kind of sweet so I am going to do that again I don't need too much of this so this again just came from that um, it was some knitting yarn that I got from the sewing layer online op shop in fact they'll be having a, a drop of um, material soon I think because they do a new stock a restock of the online op shop on a Sunday I think so I might have to jump on and have a check I think it's usually around two o'clock but I will do that after I've done the video of course be very rude just to leave you to go go online shopping and I don't really need anything but sometimes you just find things there that you would otherwise not find vintage vintage fabrics are always good and saving things from landfill you know that's a passion passion of mine that's why I love buying yeah reclaimed reclaimed fabrics from the reverse art truck or reclaimed threads from Melanie as she clears out sort of her, her stash of goodies. She must have an amazing stash. I saw that she's teaching a class um, soon at the Malvern Embroidery Guild and it's in stitching flowers. It looks really fabulous. Uh, just a half day class, I think it is. Um, so that's worth checking out if you happen to be in Victoria. I think it said on, on the class details that she'll have some of her linens and other other fabrics along there to to purchase as well she certainly has a great stash of lots of lots of vintage fabrics and and books as well I just um, actually picked up from her a garden embroidery book as well that looked really interesting I think by Thomas Cena Beck I might have got the name wrong um, but yeah I purchased that from her Instagram as well so it'd be nice to get that in due course oh I do like that so that that's really lovely it's got that little hopefully you're still able to see a little bobbly bobbly texture of that thread and just adding adding really good good texture to that I almost accidentally unthread the needle in my excitement so I wonder whether I'll just bring that little end back and yeah I might do that because I really like the look of that or will I bring it even down this way maybe I'll do that bring it around the top let's do that it's like a little breast on the bird or something little birdie with a plum coloured breast not a robin red breast but a a bluebird. Is this a bluebird? Bluebird. It's definitely blue coloured, but now it's turning a bit more purple coloured with my my painting with thread, my couching with thread. That's really nice. I like that. I like that wool. I knew I was going to find a purpose for that wool when I bought it. I couldn't resist just textured, textured nice wools to play around with. I don't do much um, knitting these days. I used to knit scarves and things. Sometimes soft toys that we knitted for charity, but I'd always have to go with the designs where you knit rectangles and squares and then you stuff them and sew them together to, to make an animal. Now that's worked really nicely, just um, twisting it around and just um, stitching it down around the front because it really does look like little, little feathers. Very happy with that. Now for the rest of the bird, I'm wondering what to do for the, the back. I might use some of, we'll, we might just tie, tie this one off. And then I might use, oops, don't want to pop out on the 
the front of the fabric. I just want to get another knot into the back. There we go. Snip it off. Put my needle there. Keep that aside for if I want to catch that thread down. Um, so I am thinking we might use some of our in, um, our crochet, our vintage crochet thread for this. Now I cut some sections of this off and now I'm wondering will we couch them down or yeah I think I'd like to keep doing the couching and then on the uh, the one at the back we'll, we'll, we'll use a different technique. So will I, how much how much strandage do I need? How many strands do I want to catch down to begin with? I might do more and then if I don't want them all I can kind of add layer layer over the top. And what will I use to sew it? I think I'll use that I'll use a contrasting colour, maybe this darker one. Did I have some of that darker one? Oh no, this is the darker one, right? So I might use the lighter one to sew over. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see if we can thread this one. Oops, nope, we got through, but we didn't get through. Let's try a second time. Come on, thread. Do I need to cut your end again? Is it fluffy or are we going to end up beautiful? Crochet threads are quite nice. Once you get them through the needle, they, they run nicely through the through the head of the needle as long as it's big enough. So just doing our little knot and pull it down. There we go. Okay, so where is this little area here below the thread head? We'll just pop through. And then we'll pop up the top. So we're making a little loop with our stitch thread over the top to hold it in place. And then we might stitch each side separately, I reckon. We might, we might outline the, the wing with this. Or the back, is it in there? It's more the back of the bird. I think it's separate to the, the front wing. It's the other, other wing maybe. So again, there's no rules about the materials to use. Just use what you've got. You don't have to rush out and get things. Um, but if you do happen to have a, an op shop near you, you might be able to pick up things like this um, vintage crochet or old wools, old embroidery packs. Um, when I was at the op shops recently, yeah, there were various packs of sort of semi-finished embroideries with their embroidery floss still still in them so that's a good way to get a variety of embroidery flosses without having to buy them individually or in a big big pack and then the wools yeah there always seems to be unfinished um, sort of balls of yarn that you can pick up in op shops big fan of the op shops How far down? I think I'll bring this a bit further down and then we'll pop up the other side of it. Hope I'm staying enough on camera, not veering too far down. Still haven't totally mastered that and I'm probably speaking too quietly again so apologies to my dear viewer who said that they enjoy my videos but sometimes they're a bit quiet. I find when I get relaxed I do talk a lot more quietly. To work on that. But I don't want to deafen anyone. I don't want to be yelling at anyone either. So it is a bit of a, it's a bit of a tough one. Someone else in the US was saying it's still too cold for them to be out, um, out in their garden. It's 
definitely the very opposite here. Having heat waves all over Australia, I think in um, Western Australia, it was like 48 or 50 degrees the other day. That, that would be hot. That would be temperature where you just can't even really go out. It'd be too stifling to even be out and about. Whereas at least here, like today, 28 or 31 or whatever it's going to be, or is. Um, in the sun, it's really hot, but if you can find a nice little bit of shade and with the river here, it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful and refreshing. Wouldn't want to be working. We saw road workers working when we were driving in in their full, full protective gear. That would be hot. Even the, the police we saw on their motor motorbikes yesterday. That would be hot, hot driving around in that midday sun. Even the afternoon sun. So I'll just leave these tails on until I've got the other pieces down just to see how we, how we finish them off. But you can see there's some nice little couch stitches over and got some beautiful texture there. And so I might use, I've also got some wool in the more sort of off white, so I might use some of that as well. Oops, just tied that around my, my piece. I'll just grab a strand of that and work out how many times. Let's maybe, we do four, so we've got a loop to stitch down. That might be easier than doing three like I did before and then not having the, not having the loop. Let's just take it off from there so we've got a bit more to work with. It's kind of fun creating a, a mystical bird, not trying to create a particular type of bird. You don't have to worry about being, being exact with your, your colours. I'm enjoying the different colours that I'm able to incorporate into this. And we're just going to want to, oops, not catch the whole thing, but we just want to hold down um, the bits at the top, like this. And then let's put them down the middle, because we did the others more as an outlining sort of one, so I might actually do the same, just lay them inside the other one, put stitches. And so I'm sort of going to alternate the stitches with where I have the other ones so they don't all sort of sit across at the same, same place. And again, once it's done, you can always add more stitches, more detailing if you want. So you can start with just enough to kind of get them stitched in place and then you can always go back and add more. But you probably want to layer everything up first because otherwise you might end up doing more detailed stitches that you just don't need because they end up getting covered up by the, the other pieces. This lovely stitching with this wool, it's very tactile, very nice to be stitching and holding. Beautiful and soft. Very fine wool. Oops. Now I'm guessing I'll need to kind of angle this down a little bit, so yeah, I might do couple more stitches holding down holding down that piece there oops so I don't know if you saw my video with my second fantastic op shop haul from up here but I've got a lovely purple gingham piece with a lyre bird on it, all done in little cross stitches on top of the, um, or sort of within the, the gingham check fabric. And it had then um, butterflies done in that same cross stitch um, in each of the corners of it. And it has a few little, little small holes, so I'll feel free to be able to chop it up and incorporate it into my future future projects. It'd be the perfect colouring actually for this, but I think um, I want these birds to be my, my focal, focal point, birds and butterflies and blooms. So I don't think I'll need it in this piece, but who knows? 
there might be a need to incorporate a, a purple lilac coloured bird scene in a future part of the, the garden. It's pretty exciting really because we're only into, into February and this project will go for six months so we're going to have so many beautiful stitched garden elements by the time we're done. It'll be really interesting to see what other prompts the girls come up with. So thank you again, Rachel and Sarah. I don't know if you get the chance, you probably don't because you've both got very busy schedules, but if you do happen to ever get the chance to yeah, watch a video, um, yeah, thank you so much for, for creating the challenge. It's just, it is wonderful. So yeah, Rachel's um, under Roxy Creations on YouTube and I think Sarah's under Roxy Creations by Sarah or something similar like that. So that's my partner you can hear just coming through the door. And what are we going to put in the middle here? Let's have a look. I wonder if we'll put a bit of this perp this um, multicoloured PLA down the middle. I reckon that could work quite well. So we've got blues and a little bit of pinky purples all and a bit of yellowy sort of veering into green but I just cut a section of it that was sort of in the right the right color scheme so again I'm going to capture the top top loop oops and not capture the rest of the, the crochet thread I'm getting a lot of thread at the point at this point that's hanging around down the bottom If I run that down the middle, yeah. it's actually really lovely because as you do these little stitches, it all starts to sort of yeah meld meld together. So you can't actually see the individual individual elements. It all just comes comes together. Checking again that I'm still recording. I keep looking up into my little camera to make sure I can see the the red red time going, and I can see we're almost we coming up to an hour so hopefully it's been an hour in which you can you've been able to just have this video playing in the background um, while you're doing your own stitching or creating or just just relaxing possibly it's fine as well just sometimes we just need a bit of downtime a bit of time out to ourselves to just relax clear the mind forget about the tensions and the stresses and the, the need to do's, the must do's, those sorts of things, they can, they can sometimes wait. We can put them on hold. This life can just sort of dash by a bit if we don't actually take those, take that time out to, to center and to give ourselves a bit of a break. Definitely need the restorative time. Okay, so now I'm down here. I just want to have a look how I want to finish off um, this little wing or back of back of sort of wing piece. So I'm thinking I will just take pieces maybe off a bit like that. Put those aside again because they may be able to be used, couch down to be used for something else. And then I'm just wondering, do I need to and I sort of merge them into the bird, into the wingage like that. I think that will work. So I'm just going to do some further stitches, still using that same, that same crochet yarn. And I'll just capture down the very end pieces of them and merge them in with the purple that's already, already there. And then I might have a look whether we do add anything that's more purpley coloured to that wing. That wing area. I'll just hold these, pull these down a bit more, I think, just to angle them in a bit. Get that out of the way. And 
it's always just those last little bit there just a little bit tricky because you've got the little loose loose and endy bits that want to stick every which way that you don't want them to stick but you can also do a couple just up on an angle to hold those little angled ends down as well like I'm doing here so just coming up on an angle although that one I actually pierced the thread so I'm just going to pop up on the other side and make sure I don't split split that bit of thread there so that's a little birdie like that I wonder if I will actually put I could either use some of this one that I've used over there I just pull, I'll pull this bit of, I managed to unthread the little purple fussy bit the other day. Let's see if I can quickly do that here now. Yep, pulling it out with my fingernails. There we go. Poof. I'm just wondering whether I want to have that same sort of element coming down and enclosing, enclosing that wing because I'm worried if I do the stitching at the back in more of the sort of neutrally tones, it might get a bit lost in with this this bird so I'm wondering if that will just help to finish it to bring to couch down that similar purple although or will I use maybe this pearly one and couch that down that would that, I think that's going to look a bit better and if I do it with this same crochet thread which is down the bottom at the moment um, so I might put that bit up there Start at the bottom down here and just bring it down there and couch it, couch it down again. And then I'll just pop up here so we'll soon be done. I think once I'll be done with this, I'll be ready for a swim in the river with Travis the dog and with Alex. Sorry, my partner was just doing sign language to me to tell me what he was doing while he whispered it. So sorry that I just was distracted for a moment, went quiet on you. I'm just popping out to the to the ATM to get some cash. He's got some lovely neighbours of the block of land that he has up here, um, and they mow the lawn. Keep the, the lawn really, or all the grass on the entire block really low with their ride on mower. So whenever we're up here visiting, we always um, take them some vouchers or some some cash. He used to buy them, used to buy them a big few slabs of beer, but they're not they're not big beer drinkers now. So I think the the cash or the vouchers is a much better. Thank you. And meanwhile, Travis the dog is still happily enjoying the air-conditioned comfort. As a black Labrador, he definitely gets very hot in the, the heat. And he's got quite a cushy lifestyle at home. He's definitely an indoor, indoor dog. But lots of walks. And he does love the river. But it suits me well because I can enjoy the afternoon stitching away and Alex sits out on the deck, listens to his music. So everyone's happy and Travis snoozes away. We've been amazed in the evenings up here. Travis just um, zonks out quite early in the evening. He's just exhausted from all the fresh air and the adventures. Um, and my parents also had their little dog, Lucy, don't know what type of dog Lucy is because mum and dad got her from the lost lost dog's home so but she's a lovely little lovely little pup 
And so Travis has had a great time playing with her. They get on, get on great. And Lucy loves the balcony up here, but she can look out and see rabbits and kangaroos and she loves the birds as well. So it's a bit of a dog's paradise too. But she's headed home today with, with Nana and Grandpa. And I might just, just bring that a little bit around. I'll just chop it off like that. And there's my, there's my needle. And I'll just bring it down and merge it in with the other, the other purple down here. I'm thinking I might do on that wing then is whether I just get that um, embroidery floss in the the purple color and just put a few little stitches down and I'll have to have a look I think I'll finish the the head of the the bird first and then um, make a judgment call on that so again let's just tie off I always like looking at the back of the piece as well where you've done your stitching. You get a much better sense of what you've actually done and your technique and your approach. But a lot of stitches just for one little piece of piece of fabric. It's definitely not a, it is called slow stitch for a reason because it's slow, it's meditative and you get lots of little stitches to create, to create a piece. I do love the textures though, really love that. Um, but yeah, I do wonder if it does just need a few few little bits and pieces. But perhaps we will do the, the head of the bird next. We'll keep some of the blue and it's got a bit of a... Yeah, it's got some other bits which are probably more that, cro that crochet colour. I wonder if I should use... Maybe I'll use the slightly darker, darker one for that. Got to find the end of this. Where is our end? There's our end. Sometimes these older rolls are a little bit not perfectly rolled. I can probably roll them onto some cardboard pieces as well, but I just bought a, bought a bag of them away. I think these ones might have come from Melanie as well. I have ones from op shops also. It's got a variety of goodies from, from Melly, Melanie. So let me know if anyone else is planning to go to Melanie's workshop. I'd love to meet some of my fellow, fellow stitchers. Checking again, I am still on camera. Hopefully I've been on camera the whole time. So I think I'll do some of these little stitches around the, around the head of the bird. Sort of do them. There's no right or wrong way to how you do them. I might just start by just doing some little ones that poke sort of up, like a little mohawk on my bird. Little mohawk stitches. And I'll probably leave the eye just as it is because I think the eye is pretty good, so I don't think I'll stitch out over that at all. This the eye would be naturally inset a little bit anyway. I just want to create these little stitches here and then we can possibly use a different colour amongst these ones or we can come back with with this colour. Just want to kind of get the outliney bits happening first. Take it down a bit more like on an angle here. You're really just painting with thread, just adding adding accents however you want to want to add them. Again, no right or wrong. And if you really don't like it, you can stitch over it and add some more texture, or you can unpick it if you really, if it's really unsuitable. So it's always just better to give something a go. Don't sit there wondering, don't sit procrastinating too much. 
Obviously don't feel rushed, but um, just give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? And often I think you'll probably find that you actually really like what you've created. So I reckon I'll just go up in the same colour thread because I think some of those lighter threads will probably just meld too much into the fabric, whereas this has a little bit of um, contrast at least. So I'm just going to mostly fill in that area, but it doesn't matter if there's some little bits where it's not totally sort of satiny stitched, where satin, satin stitch, where it forms a sort of a full covered area. I might even just do a few little ones in because in the design it sort of just ducks in a bit with the with this coloured thread. Another one in here. Oops, we have a knot. Nope, we still have a knot. Where do we have a knot? Now we don't have a knot. Happy days. So we had the market here yesterday that we have once a month down at Howard Park. And all the local producers, um, they only allow people at the market, I think, if they've um, produced the goods within... 30 or something kilometres, maybe 50 kilometres around here. So got some beautiful fruits, fresh fruits and vegetables. It's funny actually, the name of the stall is the exact surname of the people we order our veg and um, fruit box from in Melbourne. So it's possible they have relatives up here, although it could also be a quite common name for, um, for families as well. So I'll have to ask them when I get back to Melbourne if they have some rallies up in bright Beechworth region. Got beautiful blueberries. So plump, so juicy, so sweet. Been a good good time of year for blueberries and definitely good ones up here. Got some a year ago when we were up um, at the same time of year for Alex's birthday. And they were great. They kept beautifully, but they're so yummy. I think we've all, already eaten through 250 grams of them already. Because they are so yum. And very good for you as well. So they feel like an absolute treat, but they're very good with those dark, dark colour, all the good antioxidants and other things. Oops, almost got a knot, but we didn't. There we go. I do love stitching birds, I've decided. I see more bird stitching in my future, so I'll have to keep working on different, different techniques so you don't get bored when I stitch birds. Be nice to stitch the butterfly too. Have to think about what I'm going to use for that that technique. And then there's lots of opportunities in the rest of this design to add beads and other other embellishing and other French knots and bullion stitch. Might even use some bullion stitch on the butterfly as well to outline maybe the outside or possibly I mean the body. I would. Bullion stitch will definitely be useful for the body of the butterfly to make that sort of shape. So we can do that together as well. Although for the body, you can also do couching and then wrap, um, yeah, use your stitches to kind of create the delineation of that, that body piece also. So we can have a play around. There's a few butterflies on the design, so I can possibly use some different techniques when we get to that. That will definitely be another another video because I'm well and truly at the point where I shouldn't make this video too too much longer. Although I know some of you do like the longer videos because you can just put it on and relax and you don't suddenly um, yeah have to sort of change over or find the next thing to watch. I know some of you also put your videos on um, speed play when you're when you're watching them. I haven't tried that actually on anyone. Apparently it's quite funny where you get speed up the voice and 
make people go fast. Hopefully I'm speaking slow enough and hopefully I'm not saying um all the time, which I noticed when I first started recording videos. Hopefully I've got a bit better. It's a very hard thing though. You pay attention to it, but you still tend to have those little quirks of speech that you only start to pick up when you're listening back to yourself. Making sure the sound quality is okay before you post a video. So there's the nice little head on him there. So I wonder if I then maybe I'll do, yeah, I think I'll do the head in the, the sort of the purpley colors. So I'll end off this stitching here. through that little it's quite coarse the well not coarse no that's not the right word it's quite thick the embroidery floss I think that's where I tied the knot that's why it wasn't wanting to pass through it okay I'll keep that threaded in case I I want that to do any more stitches on the head and I'll just grab another Another needle to use. Um, and what colour do we want to do there? Don't blue's going to be too. Do we do it in the colour we've been using, or do we use a bit of our a bit of this one, which is our pearl, or do we use just a bit of our embroidery floss, the four strands I think it is that we have left here? Might just go down to two. Two strands or even one, probably two strands I think will be okay, it won't be too thick. Just because I want to do lots of little fine feather, feather shapes, feather stitches, well not feather stitches, it's really just little, little running stitches, little shading, shading stitches almost. And I've managed to make an absolute mess of my embroidery floss doing that. Oh no, we're okay, we've got down to two strands. to thread it or have I managed to not thread it? I've managed to thread one piece of it, not both pieces. Okay, come on. Or do I need to give you a snip to make you even? I probably should have done that, but let's see how we go. Nope, we're going to have to give it a little snip to make it even. Always helps if the two ends are right up where they where they should be. Oh, I've still managed to manage to mash it. We'll get there eventually. Probably like watching paint dry at the moment, but that's okay. <laughs> Did we? Oh, I think I've mangled it again. Honestly. Honestly, Christine, what are we doing? Did I just drop a needle on the floor? I think I did just drop the needle on the floor. Excuse me for a moment mm -hmm. while I pick up the needle from the floor. Don't want anyone stepping on that. There they go. Oops, sorry, bang. I just banged into the table, probably made your, you vibrate. Made a bad sound. Okay. We're cooking with gas again. I think Travis just woke up. I just heard a ooh. Maybe he didn't like the bang either. It's like, Mum, I was sleeping. You're a bit noisy. What are you doing, Mum? Okay, so let's just get some stitches in and then I will leave you to your, your afternoons or evenings or whatever time of day it is where you are. I'm just going to put some little feathery stitches in. Probably still leave a bit of the background fabric showing. Just want to create the impression of little feathers up to the beak and around the eyes. So if you wanted them to be finer, you could just use a single strand of embroidery floss or just some regular cotton would be even thinner. 
Again, just use what you've got. Can be very expensive if you go out and buy lots of lots of new things. So where you can try and first use your stash. Second, see what you can source at op shops or second hand or reclaimed reclaimed places. Swap with people. If you've got some friends that are into slow stitch, see if they want to do a bit of a swap of materials. If you buy a big batch of wool, for example, like this wool will go, will be eight heaps of heaps of wool to use, um, and so I can very happily happily swap that. And if anyone's watching this video and um, you were affected by the the floods um, in. Australia and you did lose your um, stitchery stash and you're wanting to get back into it let me know um, because I would love to share some of my stash with you um, because yeah just really feel for the people that have been affected by natural disasters here in in Australia and re more recently in New Zealand I saw one of the ladies on the, the Facebook group was um, putting together some packages for people in New Zealand or offering to do, do that that's just Travis having a really good shake over there. He's looking at me, I think he wants to go outside soon, so I'll have to sign off very soon. But let me just get a few more stitches in here. I think he's just wondering where his dad is as well. He likes both of us to be accounted for at all times. If he's still here when um, I finish the video, I'll give you a quick look at, look at Travis, although he can be a bit camera shy sometimes. Doesn't, doesn't like the paparazzi, or the paparazzi as we called it. He's giving me meaningful looks at the moment, saying, Mum, what are you doing? What are you doing, Mum? I'm just going to stare out the door, see if I can see Daddy. Okay. He's doing stitches at the angles that I would think the feathers would be, but again, it's not about... There's no right or wrong with stitchery. Just do what you think looks right for your, your piece. Okay, I'll just get a few more in. A few more pieces there. And then we'll finish up. See if Travis wants Travis, do you want to come around here and meet everyone? Would you like to come and meet the stitchery friends? Travis, do you want to come around here? Yeah? Okay, so I will pop a picture at the end um, or at the start of this video and now I will um, introduce you to Travis. So let's see if we can give you a bit of a look at Travis there. So that's beautiful, Travis. So you've got my my chest in the picture as well. Hey Travis, do you want to say hello? Hello, up here. Travis up here. No, oh, Travis says that's enough, so I will I will sign off. I'll say thank you very much for, for watching um, and we'll continue we'll continue working on the piece. I'll finish stitching off around the around the head um, and then we'll come back in another video and work on our second piece and I'll probably put I think just a few little purple stitches down the down the wing as well. Thanks everyone.